Hello everybody, Lathander here. Today I am talking about Guild Wars 2 Personal Assistant Overlay. As you can see, it's already well, well in action, or well working right now. Uh, it's a handy little overlay uh, application. It is not technically a mod, but I call it a mod just for simplicity's sake. It is an overlay app uh, application. It runs in the background and creates a UI overlay that just sits over top of your actual game. You can move it around, you can customize it, um, and it's very handy. I find it to be quite useful. There are some pros, there are some cons. Well, one major con that I can think of. Aside from that, the only major, the like, the only other con that it will have, I'll talk about the actual con, is the fact that it's more UI clutter, I guess. If that really bothers you as quote-unquote UI clutter. So the first up, we have the World Events Tracker, which is pretty much exactly the same as, oh, I don't know, the Delphi World Boss Timers. You can get apps on your phone that do the same thing. You can get all sorts of handy little uh, tools such as the Delphi Tracker. But if you want to be able to see something while you're playing the game without having to, you know, A, have a second monitor, which I do and is, you know, handy, um, or using the phone app, which takes your eyes off the screen. If you want to be able to just glance up at the right corner or, I don't know, above the minimap, which would actually get very annoying if you were in one of the hot areas because of the pop-up little box that they have down there that I absolutely hate. Um, you can see it right here on screen. You can pretty much customize almost any aspect of this. Uh, you, where is it? You can make it smaller, make it bigger, spread it out, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can also choose how many of them you want to be able to see. If you want to see them all, there you go. If you only want to see, a, see, say, I don't know, the next three upcoming. This one's currently active. These ones are upcoming. Clicking on the waypoint icon will copy the waypoint to your uh, clipboard. That's the word I was looking for. To your clipboard so that you can paste it right into the chat. Nice and nice and simple and then this here is the completion tracker so if you've completed it you can click on it uh, if you didn't actually get completion you can uncheck it um, one of the nice things about the world event tracker is if you go into the events uh, settings which you can also access through this little button over here um, you can who's talking why why are you talking I don't care uh, you can uh, set all of the quote-unquote settings right here although there aren't really all that many adjust the time to my knowledge takes into account the pre-event talking and whatnot that goes on but I'm not 100% sure about that so don't quote me uh, I use standard because then it perfectly lines up with the Delphi tracker uh, if I do this and hi there we go if we look at the shatter oh Mode near is in six and a half minutes, and this says mode near six and a half minutes. There we go. Nice and easy way to demonstrate that. Uh, the inactive events, just not uh, stuff that's not currently going on. If it's green, like I said, it's active. If, if it's white, it's inactive upcoming. So <laughs> I usually leave that turned on. Otherwise, hell, what's the point of having it? Uh, auto detect completion. I believe it detects whether or not you've gotten the chest, and if you've gotten the little chest that pops up here at the end of the event, it will tick that automatically as completed. That way you don't have to do it manually. Handy handy. Uh, it has notifications that show up over here. You'll probably see one for the mode near all golf in about oh, 45 seconds. It'll pop up right over here. Uh, because I have everything except for Quaddle set to 5 minutes and to Quaddle, of course, set to 25 minutes because good freaking luck getting into Sparkfly Fen uh, if you don't get there at least 20 to 25 minutes early. Good luck getting into a good map that has a pretty much 100% chance of <laughs> successfully completing uh, to Quaddle, which is super easy, but so many people still have so much trouble with it these days. Uh, yes, I will get to that in a moment. Uh, notification duration, so you can set how long these notifications stay up. That one is for World vs. World, and it's only popping up because I turned World vs. World trackers on for this video. I usually keep it off when I'm not in World vs. World. There we go, Modineer Elgoth. I'm gonna move that over. There we go. Um, 
Yeah, so that's the event, the world event tracker. Nice and handy. Next up, we have the uh, dungeon tracker, which is exactly what it sounds like. It, it allows you to track completion for pretty much every path story and uh, set of fractals here. It does give reward amounts for the dungeon paths, but this overlay has not been updated since about September 23rd, I believe. Um, and therefore, this is not updated for the balance changes that came about with the launch of Heart of Thorns. Uh, so that amount might be incorrect. But when you finish the dungeon path, it will put a check mark into whichever one you completed. If you didn't actually complete it, you can just check it, uh, click it to uncheck it. Aside from that, the settings for this are pretty basic. There's not a lot to it for obvious reasons. So if I go into the settings here. There we go. Uh, for the dungeon tracker, auto start, auto stop. That is just for, uh, say, the it'll track what your best completion time is, what your average comp completion time is, and all of your completion times, which of course you can reset. And you can remove this from being tracked if you don't want to see it. The general settings notification borders just allows you to move these notifications around without having to have one of those notification windows up at the time, which can be kind of annoying at times. Auto fade window borders, that just allows these to disappear uh, and not be bright and I don't know, I, I like to keep them off because I don't need to see dungeons and world events when I am looking at those. I know exactly what I put in which location. Non-interactive windows is handy if you act, if you have a tendency to you know, end up clicking up here when you're fighting, uh, when you're taking part in combat or events. Um, if you have non-interactive windows off, you can accidentally click into this, which will take uh, your focus away from the Guild Wars 2 window, thus causing you to not be able to move your character because your Guild Wars 2 is not actually the main focus. No, I don't want Dutch. Thank you. Uh, overlay menu icon is this little icon right here. You can either have it on or off because you can set hotkeys for opening and closing any one of these uh, overlay sections. Um, it's not necessary to have this. I use this because I don't want to bother with toggle buttons. Uh, auto hide when not running and loses focus. So if you click off of the window, they will all disappear. If you click back onto the window, they will all reappear. Uh, you can set that for the windows and the overlay menu icon, which is this guy right here specifically. Uh, check for updates at startup. I'm not sure if this function actually does anything because it has not been updated since September and I got this in September so I ended up picking up this uh, app noti um, overlay after the last update was released. Uh, there's not a whole lot of activity over on the forums for this so I'm not sure if it's dead and no longer being updated or what's going on. Ooh, oh, Roddy's up. Handy. I might have to take a little break and deal with that, but uh, that will have to wait until people actually show up. So uh, the events have already shown that, hotkeys have shown that, dungeons have shown that. Commerce is broken. Do not use this. It crashes the app. I don't know why. I've tried rebuilding the database. This crashes the app. It's really annoying. As soon as it starts to auto search for an item, it will crash. Uh, oh shoot, crippy, crippy crap. Uh, oh shoot, I'm going to leave the queue for now because somebody is doing Rotbeard. I need you to get down there. There we go. Uh, anybody still down over here? No? Okay, time to get out of here before I get attacked by anything. <laughs> and let us continue where we left. Ah oh, crap. Uh, uh, really? Uh, I'm not waiting in that queue again. All right, so to demonstrate... Oh, oh, yeah, I gotta reopen it. Ah! I'm having a barrel of fun right now trying to talk about this. Uh, inst okay, could you... Thank you. There we go. Okay. So instead of going into World vs. World, I'm just gonna... Oh, I've already got the notifications on. I'm gonna turn that off and actually open the world versus world tracker i'm not actually in world versus oh crap 
Um, don't use my map. Uh, I want it to display Eternal Battlegrounds. There we go. Okay. So, Eternal Battlegrounds is what I have currently displayed for the tracker here. It will show you all of the uh, capturable locations in the whichever map you're in. Typically, you would have it set to use your map because you're on that map. That's what you care about. But you can override which map you're on, just as I did there. You can have it um, show or hide hidden objectives. You can have it show whatever you want it to show. You can have it sort it based on how far away you are, so it will actually reorder these based on which one is actually closer to you. This number here is the, um, what's it called? The invincibility timer on the, uh, uh, on, god, I don't know what they're called the unit that you need to kill to actually be able to capture that location. So that is your... You can't capture this until this timer is done timer. Um, you can have it in feet or meters or based on how quickly you're moving, like how long it'll take you to get there at your current speed and direction. Uh, you can have it horizontal or vertical. I'm not a big fan of vertical <laughs> for obvious reasons because it... I don't know. It takes up a little more space this way, uh, and if you want to be able to see more, you got to go like all the way across. I guess you could put it up here if you really wanted to, but why do that when you can just have it nice vertically uh, and down here out of the way? Something like that. I prefer that. that that's me. Uh, and then you've got the WVW notifications. Those pop up when something is captured. So if something is captured and you A have the settings for World vs. World set to show you notifications for that area, so if I turn them all on, then I'll see all notifications when anything is captured in all of World vs. World, Battlegrounds, and Borderlands, um, which I really don't care about. Uh, and in this way I only see the notifications for the Eternal Battlegrounds, because that's usually what I do when I actually World vs. World. Uh, this, as with anything else, can be placed pretty much anywhere and yeah so it'll show you how far away you are from these uh, who owns it so which color owns it how many points you uh, you get I think per tick uh, for owning that location um, how far away which direction it is usually it would have over here uh, somewhere over here it would have a direction notification uh, so it'll have a little arrow that points in the direction of that particular resource or uh, capturable location very it can be helpful uh, if you are in world versus world for sure it definitely beats having the world versus world map up on a second monitor because maybe you don't have a second monitor or using your smartphone because well I mean that just that's a good way to get ganked uh, let me put these grenades away it's not exactly safe to just be standing there with a bundle of grenades in my hand uh, and then last but not least the team speak overlay this is handy if your guild uses team speak um, for, I don't know, raids, or World vs. World, or just, you know, for having fun. Because it will show who is talking when they are talking. It allows you to send messages directly to the chat channel that you are in. It allows you to change your chat channel there, uh, and it will let you see who all is in your chat channel. All right here from the TeamSpeak overlay window. Which, that's pretty awesome if you ask me. Very handy if you're using TeamSpeak. Uh, it'll show notifications when somebody enters or leaves. I'm pretty sure it shows up here in this window, just like it showed when I opened this. It showed that I entered the room. Um, the chat entry box is this guy here. The channel box is this guy here. And just to show, yes, it does allow me to, if I actually have access to these places. Switched. There we go. <laughs> It'll actually allow you to change channels. It does work. So yeah, that is pretty much everything to do with Guild Wars 2 Personal Assistant Overlay. It is very handy, very helpful. Now, the one major downside 
to Guild Wars 2 Personal Assistant Overlay. And that is the fact that if you use the action cam, you will not be able to use the overlay unless you set it to not be interactable. If you go into your settings and you set non-interactive windows, you will be able to use it, but you might get annoyed, kind of like I do, because... Okay, it's not going to do it with it non-interactive. That's good. That's good. I wasn't actually sure if that worked or not, so I can start using it again. Uh, right now, it looks like I'm just randomly wiggling my window around, but no, there is a reason why I say it will not work normally if you use uh, the action cam. And that is because when you move your mouse up over here, it will actually still move your mouse. So action cam kind of locks your mouse to the middle of the screen, but your mouse will still move around and you can accidentally click on this um, and end up losing focus on the main window, which is very annoying. Uh, especially if you're trying to not die. You know, if you're in World vs. World, or if you're in the middle of one of these events, and that happens, yeah, you're pretty much toast. Your ass is grass. Unless you're lucky. You might be lucky. Luckier than me. I usually have very bad luck when that sort of stuff happens. That is the only major downside, aside from the fact that I haven't seen any updates and the uh, price tracker doesn't work. But... That is the only major downside to the app as it is. That's all I have to say. I'm going to turn those World vs. World notifications off now because I don't need to see them. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Guild Wars 2 Personal Assistant Overlay. You can download it nice and easy, easily, English good, I can speak it, yes, uh, from, well, I usually just... <laughs> do a Google search for GW2PAO, but you can download it from their handy dandy, actually very well designed website. Um, it is actually a very pretty website, I have to say. Uh, download button is right here, it will take you straight down to the download section. You can download the installer or you can download a zip file. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't recommend these because it takes more effort. Uh, but. He's also got the source code posted, so if you want to make tweaks or you have, you know how to do stuff in uh, whatever he has used to create the, the overlay with, you can play around with it, I guess. <laughs> I know nothing about it, therefore I do not care about this button. This is the one that I used. It's, uh, it just allows you to install the program really nothing more to it than that um yeah you don't really have to worry about getting banned for this this does not give you any distinct advantage over other players it's just a way of centralizing information that you would otherwise be able to get through other sources the world event trackers on Dolphy, for example um dungeon tracker piece of paper and a pencil going check 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 whoop dee do uh, the World vs. World Tracker and Notification, again, there are websites that track all of that. It just saves you the hassle of having to look at the second monitor or alt tab. <clears throat> the Price Tracker, again, there's, I believe there's a Dolphy Price Tracker. This one, Guild Wars 2 Timer slash Resources. This actually has a tracker built into it somewhere. 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 I can't remember where. I know it's there. Trading tracker, there we go. That's exactly what I was. <laughs> yeah, it does have a tracker right there. So it's really not giving you any uh, anything that another player could not get um, by loading up one of these other resources, the boss timers or the resource tracker. This is actually probably more helpful because <laughs> it shows you where you can go to get certain um, things, uh, harvestables. That said, if you have any questions about Guild Wars 2 Personal Assistant Overlay that I have not addressed, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer it, though. Please bear in mind, I just use it. I don't know how it works. Uh, so if you have problems installing it, I probably won't be able to help, but I'll try! That's about the best I can say. I will try to help if I can. Um, again, I will have the... Uh, I will have... I will have the download link in the video description below. Thanks for watching, everybody. 
Lysander out. I need to set that to non-interactive so I can use it because it's helpful. Yay! Yahee! Woohoo! Ho oh, ho hee hee ha ha! Perfect! That's what I like to see. Hooray!